The Honourable Member for Churchill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to ask the uh, Minister of Aboriginal Affairs a few serious questions. Uh, number one, does the Minister acknowledge the urgency of addressing violence against First Nations, Inuit and Métis women? The Honourable Minister. Indeed, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, that is why Economic Action Plan 2013 announced funding of $24 million over two years for the Family Violence Prevention yeah. Program allowing my department to continue its programming at a funding level of approximately $30 million in 2013-14 and 2014-15. This investment uh, contributes to enhance uh, uh, safety and security of on-reserve residents, particularly women and children. The Honourable Member for Churchill. Does the Minister acknowledge the tragedy of over 582 missing and murdered Aboriginal women? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, absolutely, and that is why we are taking concrete action by investing $20 million, $25 million over five years to address the issue of missing and murdered Aboriginal women in Canada. Funding is also provided for shelters and violence prevention programming on reserve, and this uh, should attest to the Honourable Member our concern about the issue. The Honourable Member for Churchill. If the Minister and his government are so concerned, will they commit to a national inquiry into missing and murdered Aboriginal women? Yes or no? The, the, if, the concern, uh, if the concern of the uh, Honourable Member is such, uh, maybe she could extend it to the uh, matrimonial property rights of women, which we are trying to implement in, in Canada, to try to fill a gap of over 25 years where women living on reserve are denied a basic right which the NDP oppose. The Honourable Member for Churchill. Chair, I would ask the respect for the Minister to, I would ask res, uh, for the Minister to respect the rules and, and keep his answers to the same as, as uh, the timing of the questions. <coughs> and, uh, uh, and my question is, will the Minister commit to a national inquiry into missing and murdered Aboriginal women? Yes or no? Uh, this House has decided to create a special committee to look at the issue. The government has endorsed the motion, and as I understand, uh, the work is currently taking place to look at this issue, and I'm sure that we can uh, trust the members of Parliament to do an excellent job in their mandate. The Honourable Member for Churchill. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to acknowledge that the, that question was not answered, and, and certainly families and, and uh, organizations like the Native Women's Association of Canada would like to know uh, that answer directly from the Minister. Which department takes the lead role in coordinating feder the federal government response to violence against Aboriginal women? The Honourable Minister. Uh, this is a whole of government concern, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, many departments, several departments, are concerned about this issue and work together uh, with uh, First Nations, with stakeholders across, all across Canada to try to address uh, this important issue. The Honourable Member for Churchill. And again, which department is taking the lead? Honourable Minister. The, the lead over uh, the inquiry is taken by the Department of Justice, uh, uh, and uh, it is assisted ably, I might add, by a host of other departments. The Honourable Member for Churchill. Many recommendations in the UN Universal Periodic Review of Canada draft report ask that Canada develop a national action plan to address violence against Aboriginal women. Will the Minister commit to a national action plan? The Honourable Minister. <coughs> will the Honourable Member respect the, the will of this House and let the special committee do its work, do its recommendation, and then allow the government to analyze those and, uh, and take the proper uh, 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 the steps that uh, have to be taken. Reasonable. The Honourable Member for Churchill. Will the Minister uh, use the power that he has in his role to listen to what the, uh, emerged from the UN Periodic Review and uh, commit to a national action plan, yes or no? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Uh, uh, Chair, uh, it is important, I believe, that uh, we respect the will of the House, who has appointed a special committee to look into this issue. We shall let the committee do its work, listen to witnesses, to uh, yeah, great, stakeholders, sir. and we'll listen to Canadians. and then get the recommendations of the committee, which I can assure the honourable member, the government will consider diligently. The honourable member for Churchill. Does the department have benchmarks to measure progress on preventing violence against women? 
The Honorable Minister. The issue of uh, violence against women, as I have uh, indicated, is a serious concern. Ending violence against aboriginal women is a priority for our government, and it is a shared responsibility, Mr. Uh, Chair, of not only the federal government, but provincial, territorial government, and also civil society. The Honourable Member for Churchill. If it's such a priority, how much funding is specifically set aside by the Department to address violence against Aboriginal women? The Honourable Minister. Plan 2013 announced funding of $24 million over two years for the Family Violence Prevention Program, allowing my department to continue to offer its programming at a funding level of approximately $30 million in 2013-14. And another thing that could help these women and these children mm -hmm. would be the adoption of S2, the bill that tries to fill a gap that had existed in this country for too long. Chill. Going to northern and remote communities. The Honourable Minister. I didn't understand the question. Because his uh, colleague was clapping too loud. How much of that money is allocated for northern and remote communities? Poor baby. The uh, $30 million uh, uh, program uh, that will be uh, uh, spended in 2013-14 will be for the benefit of uh, 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 all uh, First Nations all across Canada. The Honourable Member for Churchill. How does the funding for emergency shelters on reserve compare to funding for those off reserve? The Honourable Minister. We have invested into about uh, 41 shelters that exist uh, uh, all over uh, the country, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, and uh, this network of uh, 41 uh, shelters, uh, which has grown from 35 about a few years ago, uh, has grown, as I said, uh, from 35 in, in a few years ago to 41 as a result of the construction of five uh, new shelters and the addition of an existing shelter in the Atlantic region to the list of uh, department-funded shelters. Honourable Member for Churchill. Is the Minister saying that out of 633 First Nations, only 41 First Nations have emergency shelters on reserve? The Honourable Minister. Approximately 329 First Nation communities are served by these shelters. And in 2010-11, this is uh, approximately 3,143 women and 2,890 children accessed family violence shelters, and 270 proposal-based prevention projects were supported throughout Canada. Honourable Member for Churchill. How many of these shelters are operating at full capacity? Honourable Minister. That uh, some are uh, operating at full capacity, others at less than full capacity. What is important is that the investment uh, that has been made this year, again, will ensure that these programs can continue throughout Canada. The Honourable Member for Churchill. But out of these 41 shelters, how many are at full capacity? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Chair, uh, the, as I indicated, uh, these shelters are there to, to meet uh, the demand as, as it comes. Uh, some are at full capacity indeed, others are at less than full capacity, and the important thing is that these shelters are there in place to serve indeed these 325, 229 First Nation communities across Canada. Honourable Member. Clearly no real answers there, so let's move on to another question. How many uh, 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 does the minister acknowledge the disproportionate number of Aboriginal women in prisons? In, uh, does he know what percentage of women in prisons are Aboriginal? Honourable Minister. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I do not have the exact number of, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, Aboriginal women uh, in, in prison. Uh, I'm sure that the minister uh, of uh, public uh, uh, public. Uh, uh, public safety would be able to answer her question. The Honourable Member for Churchill. The percentage of Aboriginal women pr in prison is 
How is this government addressing the uh, number of women, Aboriginal women, overrepresentation of Aboriginal women in prisons? The Honourable Minister. Not only is this uh, a matter for the provincial, uh, for uh, the, the federal minister of public safety, but as I said earlier, Mr. Chair, the problem of of, uh, of, uh, of women uh, in, in those circumstances is is a shared responsibility of not only the federal but also the provincial and territorial governments and indeed civil society. The Honourable Member. What percentage of funding for Aboriginal economic development is going to women and or, or organizations that serve and employ Aboriginal women? The Honourable Minister. The, uh, the, the Department has an economic development uh, program uh, uh, which uh, is in place and which benefits uh, uh, without gender regards all First Nation members all across Canada. Sure, sure. Honourable Member. Uh, Mr. Chair, we know that Aboriginal women are often, uh, often live in greater po poverty than uh, Aboriginal men. The question is, in the Aboriginal Devel Economic Development Program, what percentage of the funding is focused on engaging women in the workplace, or uh, is there no focus on uh, employing and training Aboriginal women? Honourable Minister. I know uh, for a fact, uh, Mr. Chair, that my colleague, the Minister in Charge of the Status of Women, also the Minister of Health, and our department are working together uh, to address uh, that particular situation. And there are programs indeed in place which are not, uh, they are gender neutral, but efforts are being uh, made to work with these stakeholders, with these groups, in order to improve their employability. And that's why I think that the NDP should revise its position to oppose the measures that will lead to better skills training of these youth, these young girls and women, all throughout First Nations in Canada. Honourable Member for Churchill. How does the federal government plan to address the need for increases to officer compliment in compliments in First Nation police, office, off, police forces and for proper training for these officers and proper equipment so that they can do their job effectively, efficiently and safely? The Honourable Minister. I thought she was going to congratulate the government for the announcement that, uh, by the Minister of Public Safety that uh, long-term, sustainable, predictable funding will be, uh, uh, has been committed to provide the, that, those services on First Nations all across Canada. Here, here. The Honourable Member. When will the First Nations Police Program be updated to address the current situation facing First Nations Police Services and include resources for housing and infrastructure? The Honourable Minister. The, uh, the fact of the matter, as I just said, is that uh, the government has recently announced long-term, sustainable, pred predictable funding to help uh, First Nation uh, police, uh, uh, the First Nation lands, and uh, I think and I believe, uh, Mr. Chair, that we can trust uh, these professionals uh, to uh, do their job uh, to the best, uh, not only of their ability, but they know the terrain really well, and I trust that they can uh, uh, discharge that responsibility. Honorable Member. Is the, is the Minister saying that all First Nations that uh, uh, have, uh, have pointed to the uh, deficiency in policing funding uh, are, uh, are okay with the funding announcement, or are there still First Nations that require and have asked for federal funding for the police service? Mr. Chair, uh, th this, this honourable member should know by now that this government remains focused on four priorities. I mean, uh, they are, and they've been outlined by the Prime Minister many times, Canadians, and these are priorities that Canadians care most about. First, their families. Second, the safety of our street and communities. And that doesn't stop at the door of First Nation. They are included in their pride in being a Canadian citizen, a citizen of this country. Plus, of course, their personal financial security. Honourable, a member has one minute left of her time. I'd ask the Minister to uh, hear the calls from the Garden Hill First Nation regarding policing. The Department completely eliminated the funding envelope that provides First Nations and Tribal Councils with the financial resources to secure legal services. Can the Minister explain why this government continues to take actions that stifle the ability of First Nations to advocate and protect their interests? Well, Minister has 30 seconds. Uh, quite to the contrary, uh, this government and this department is working cooperatively with all First Nations all across Canada to improve the situation, the self-sufficiency, 
and the prospects of all First Nations all across Canada.